It's been three years of strategic governance in Borno State under the Professor Baba Ganazulum led administration. From security to education, health, science and technology, the state has continued to witness tremendous growth in social economic development and human capacity. Welcome to Borno Restoration. I am Jesse Tafida. But first, let's bring you up to speed with Borno Today. An estimated 2.3 million people have been displaced across the northeastern states of Borno, Yobe and Adamawa as a result of an emergency that has raged for over a decade. It has brought a lot of destruction in its wake and Borno residents have lived in unease, unsure of where the next attack will come from or take place. Now, it is time to bring harmony among the people. Traditional leaders and representatives of various Borno ethnic groups are part of the sensitization workshop. Culture is what brings people together, it what makes people uh, stick to each other. It was built the root of life, as you can say. Then if this particular uh, insurgency keep on going without us recuperating those things, people not being revived to what they are known of, definitely we will not have peace as we want it to be. Without culture, there is no way that, because we believe that culture is the way as in the people live. So we are using that so that we can promote peace. I expect them that wherever they find themselves, they should talk about peace. They should always encourage peace and they should not allow dispute or conflict to come between them. Traditional and community leaders have been urged to create harmony between members of the society. Peacekeeping is our responsibility and is our primary assignment. There is, peace cannot reign without involving traditional rulers because it's part of our responsibility. We have different tribes in our community, so most of the time if we had such problem, they used to come to us and reconcile among themselves. We want to pass this message that everybody is one. Even the title of the drama is Gidanghaya. When we mean Gidanghaya, we are referring it to maybe it can be a state, a nation, or the world itself, because we see it as a temporary world. No matter who you are, where you come from, no matter how long you stay, after a time being, you'll be no more. We really need peace. We have suffered a lot. Fighting and all these things will never solve the problem. We need to unite ourselves. We need, we need to just keep out this cultural and ethnic so that we can come together and unite and brought that peace. The increasing cases of gender-based violence in the country is now of concern to citizens. Worrying is the fact that perpetrators of such heinous acts most times get away with these crimes without being punished. It is why ambassadors of dialogue, climate and reintegration are bringing together human rights defenders and representatives of various security outfits to build their capacity on how best to respond to cases of gender-based violence. In the northeast where the insurgency has uh, displaced a lot of populations um, and people are taking refuge, um, the cases of GBV is on the rise. Security agencies play a very critical or important uh, role in um, the fight against gender-based violence and so uh, it's, it becomes very important to support their capacity. We want to add to what they already know to build their capacity more on effective response to such cases and you know there are different the security agency available to use the one you run to. When you speak up you, you get the help. The participants are of the view that if victims get effective psychosocial support they would overcome the fear of stigma. We should be able to give them awareness create awareness for them, for them to know the implication of withdrawing such type of case without the consent of the state council, because there is harassment and there is safety involved. The military have put in some measures. There are seminars, there are enlightenments that have been put in place so that to make sure that no military personnel is found indulging in such dastardly acts as it can drag the name of the military in the mud, at the same time it can tarnish its image, at the same time it can make the populace of which we are supposed to be protecting to lose faith and confidence in the military.
The Lake Chad region has been a major battleground of the 12th year insurgency. The region which straddles Nigeria, Niger, Chad and Cameroon has been the hotbed of insurgents over the years. But the multinational joint tax force has adopted different strategies in its counterinsurgency operations which have led to relative peace in the region. Today, the first commander of the MNJTF, Major General Abdul Alifa Ibrahim, briefs the press on the gains of their operations. We have carried out series of operations in the past. Operation Gamma Aiki, Operation Amni Fakat, Operation Sharon Foyge, and others. So that gave us impetus to go where we have not been able to go before. We killed the criminals. Um, coordination with the air is better. The fact that we are doing this has allowed uh, freedom of movement. It has allowed commerce to pick up. It has allowed people to be resettled back to their areas. It has allowed communities to become resilient. With the ongoing operation Lex Sanity, the MNJTF has carried out 17 major attacks, destroying many terrorist enclaves, killing 805 terrorists and over 4,000 surrendering. Counterinsurgency operations are people-centric because we are actually fighting an enemy that, um, yes, sometimes they wear something that looks like uniform. We have to be close to the locals. Major General Abdul Khalifa Ibrahim warns those still collaborating with terrorists to stop, as the tax force will not spare anyone found wanting. In the last four years, social economic growth in Borno has been at an all-time high. The state has continued to wear the stamp of prosperity and development, with relative peace now enjoyed by residents. Life is back to normal. A laudable initiative by the state governor is the inauguration of 300 first batch of road marshals of Borno State Traffic Management Agency, BOTMA. The state government, in partnership with the United Nations Development Program, UNDP, trained and equipped the marshals. The main objectives of establishing the agency is to bring discipline and sanity to the transport sector as well as enhance revenue remittance. Any organization that you are managing, you, at least you have to dedicate powers to others. Because so far we have about 30 supervisors that are supervising all those uh, 270 mashad. With the 30 supervisors that we have, with these 270 mashad, we have all together we have 300 mashad. So I think everything is going as usual. Prior to existence of uh, Borno State Traffic Management Agency, on a serious note, we have uh, it has become a, a source of uh, concern to the state because there is no. No, uh, there is no discipline in our state, so that is why the government uh, finding them to establish this agency. To be sincere, if I tell you, up to now, we are, the level of uh, sanity that we have in this state is quite appreciable. Uh, yes, and going forward, we need to bring so much sanity to the state because we want to follow suit like uh, in the other state, uh, Lagos and Kaduna and the Kano state. So very few you are going to see significant changes within the, in the state by God with us. The agency since its establishment has generated over 200 million naira revenue to the state government. The primary function of this Borno State Travel Management is to bring, uh, is to protect the life of as, uh, to provide safety of life and property, and it's a, also a gen, uh, revenue generation farm. Uh, if you look at it, in the last five months, we were able to generate almost 260 million naira to the state. Uh, I'm hoping before the end of the year, we'll do more. President of the state appreciate the laudable initiative by the state governor. 
I would say uh, Bodma are really trying and there is a lot of uh, improvement in the traffic management and in terms of discipline of road uh, commuters in the state. Most of it, uh, everybody that stays in Meduguri knows that before, it is a normal thing to have uh, Kekena Pep riders recklessly driving, tricycle during weddings. So, but now, if you can notice, a lot of th these activities have stopped because there is no place in Meduguri now you will see somebody recklessly driving Kekena Pep or uh, running around with cars in the state, which in terms of the discipline, we think it has, uh, it has gone a long way in improving the discipline aspect of the road commuters. People use Kekena Pep to steal handset, enter people's house, steal their goods. By this body number, we will be able to trace them. They are doing very good. The state government is working assiduously to increase the numbers of marshals across the state. I had a chat with the chairman, Borno Traffic Management Agency, Hussein Iblama. He tells us more about government activities to improve the transportation in the state. Take a listen. Welcome to Borno Restoration, sir. Um, tell us, what is Botma? Botma simply means Borno State Traffic Management Agency, which came on board during the era of His Excellency, Professor Engineer Babagana Warazulum, MNI, FNSE. It was one of his developmental agendas that he is prepared to run the affairs of governance of Borno State. The needs to have free flow of traffic, especially in our cities, has become an issue, not only in Borno State, not only in Nigeria. And in Borno State, you are aware, over a decade, the insurgency that we found ourselves, most of our rural dwellers, those who are lucky to have escaped from the ancestral homes, villages, all were in Borno State, inside the capital of Medjugorje. Uh, the issue of traffic, both vehicular, even pedestrians, has become an issue. So, the core functions of Botma is free flow of traffic, Congestions, overloading, reckless driving, underage driving, obeying simple road signs, safety of life and property, especially when there is accident, it's our duty to rush the victim to hospital for medical attention. If there's an accident, there's a blockage on the road, the, it's our duty to immediately clear the road for free flow of traffic. Not even a vehicular issue. If you go to some markets or places where there's gathering like post office, or motor parks, you see entrance to the motor parks will be blocked by our petit traders, hawkers. It is our duty to enforce it, to clear it so that both vehicle and pedestrian will have free flow of traffic. We have 300 staff, they are proven for us. They have been trained in the first instance with the police because we have to fall back to police to give us their past experience and the training was very marvelous. Immediately we finish again, we have an assistance from United Nations Development Program. They used a consultant, came on board and trained our personnel again. That's double training. And that's why, coming to your questions, that's why you saw them 
and every nook and crannies, uh, traffic junctions, roundabouts, and other very volatile uh, places within the city that is very uh, prone to traffic congestions. And to God be the glory, since we started, always success. I'm not here to blow my trumpet, but if you go out, interview the people in the city of my degree, they will tell you what they felt or how did they perceive about Botman or the Lord Mashas. Uh, if you go to post office before the formation of Botman, if you have a very fancy car, you don't like to follow that side. That's from Bolivian about, or you don't proceed to specialist hospital, or either Monday market, or the Monday market proper. You'll, if it, you didn't dent somebody, somebody will dent you. That's how it can happen. But today, you just pass without any scratches, without any quarrel, or holobolo with any other uh, road users. With all these grades goes to uh, uh, bottom of my shells. And, and uh, discipline on the road, especially in Noki Kenape, before the formation of bottom I want to emphasize on this, especially during weekends, if there's any wedding, is there any wedding of their members? You see them trooping in hundreds, they will block the whole road. No any other person will have access until they move away. Or even within themselves, you see a lot of crashes, sometimes even to fatality. Yes. Loss of life. What I mean is loss of life when it is fatal. It's loss of life. Life has been lost. Sometimes damage the property. The key chase is the good damage. Damage even to our uh, street lights. Damage to our other accessories. Even public properties or private properties. But today, because of the sanctions attached to it, monitoring and enforcement, all this has become a history. But as per Baltimore law, there are sanctions to any disobedience to any of the road traffic rules and regulations. Our own sanctions are even higher than the police, even road safety, Federal Road Safety Commission. Why? Because we need people to learn a lesson. Like one way you follow, 5,000 up to 10,000 for your fine. If you follow one way, you know one way, coming opposite direction. Especially that's dual carriage way. Or for you, instead for you to round the roundabout, you start to take shortcuts. If you or disobey traffic lights, 5,000. There are a lot of things. The list of our fine is 2,000. And yes, make it, yeah. All these uh, fines that have been generated from disobedience, low uh, road users. And it goes to the government and asks how did they, did they pay or did they pay for the fines imposed on them. As per, law, as per the law, you will go and pay a remitter. We don't call it cash. You go and pay for a remitter. You pay, we confirm it, we document it. Even when you pay, then you get your remitter, you pay it in and show for us. We have our record. So, so, so person, so, so, so offense, or so, so, so date, and so, so, so area, so, so place, we document it. The law is not acceptable for anybody. What is the break the law? Go and pay. He knows. He's a disciplinarian. So I don't know anybody in this state that will pass his excellency. A brand child to this very agency. a founder of this agency, 
that will break the law and will keep quiet or any of his relations to brag of him. If he had you, he will, he will not be taken kind with you. So we simply used to tell them in a language, you know, as I told you, as we have undergone a series of training, uh, we have a lot of public relations, psychology, social psychology, the human rights, even just how to relate with human beings, a fellow human being. And considering how Nigerians will be sometime, we are taught how to manage all these type of things. To avoid rancor. But as we are talking to you in a gentle way, a gentle manner, it doesn't stop us from enforcing the law. Now, talk to us about how you want citizens of Nigeria to help you achieve your markets. It is still now Borno. Bodma is meant for all Borno states in respect to who, where you are. Once you are in Borno, territory of Borno state, the law of Bodma covers you. Now you have been saying my degree many because of the situation we find ourselves. And let me tell you, Your Excellency, promise us any moment, uh, places where there's uh, peace and security, and it's uh, being urban centers, we will open our branches, especially Bama, Biu, Mongono, very soon. Because those places, they are just like a, a towns now. They are more than towns. So populations are there. Roads, because of the developmental, uh, there were programs going on, roads, streets, uh, there. So we will move to open branches. This bottom is for people of Borno State, for their own safety, on the roads, their cooperation is beyond expectation. And right now we have started uh, getting their cooperation, especially in the city of Meridu, as I said it. We see a lot of things happening. Even if our marshal didn't call us, they will give us a call. You know, this synergy, this patriotism. In some places, even not close to where our traffic points are, where our marshals at stations, when there's any accident, there's any blockage, they will give you a call. Or whichever way, if there is a somewhere, they will just call our attention. And we move in quickly. We resolve it. Because we have to use mechanics of alternative dispute resolutions. It's very, very important. We, the management, that's what we have been doing. Mm. Immediately we are 24 hours on ground. Chairman Borno Traffic Management Agency, Honorable Usaini Bulama, thank you for your time on Borno Restoration. With pleasure. Good governance means delivering effective, inclusive, and fair administration. And that's our package on this episode of Borno Restoration. Many thanks for watching. I'm Jesse Tafida. See you next time.